Hello, uh, middle school saxophonists. Um, this is a short video um, all about what to look out for when you're practicing this week's uh, playing assignment, which is called a sailor's shanty. Um, hopefully this might help you out. Um, I don't know. Well, we'll have some fun. So uh, let's take a look. Let's dive right in. So uh, time signature is 4-4. Four, four. That's super easy. Four beats in a measure, nothing to worry about. But a key signature is something to watch out for. Got an F sharp here. That means every time you see any kind of F, be it high F or low F, it's going to be your F sharp fingering. Remember, F sharp is fingers one, two, three, and five. Again, that's one, two, three, and five. And of course, the octave key if you're going to play the high F. Let's find one of those in our music just to reference it. Ah, it's right here. It's towards the end, second to last measure. One of the cool things about smart music, if you haven't figured out already, is that the button here will actually show you the fingering diagram if you forget, which is pretty neat. Um, the highest note that this uh, song has in it is a high A right here. And we don't see that note too often, but it's fingered just like low A, but it has the octave key. So the fingers are one, two, and the octave key in the back. Um, other than that, this song's pretty easy. The thing that you really are going to have to watch out for is the articulation. So you've got two different options for articulations in this tune. You've got accent marks and staccato dots. Let's take a look at those. Um, these two E naturals here have accent marks over them. Uh, that means that you're going to use a little bit more air and emphasize those notes so they pop out of the music. And then these staccato notes uh, with the dots, that means those notes are going to be nice um, and separated, nice and little bouncy notes. So I'm going to play, I hope, uh, these uh, first two measures here and just show you what I'm talking about. Um, let me move this down so maybe you can see my fingers a little better. Okay. One, two, ready. <sighs> flub here on the low G. It's because my key's sticking. I tried to fix it with a hair tie, but never mind. Uh, no big deal. So did you, hopefully you noticed that these E's, uh, they popped out of the texture and these were nice and separated. Cool. So when you're practicing this, the tempo that's indicated, which is 72, might be a little too quick. And this is what it sounds like. If that's too fast for you, feel free to go up here into the left Type in something like 50, which is a lot lower, and it'll be that'll be a lot more of a comfortable tempo just to practice at. When you do go to submit and you press the red button, you will need to um, bump it back up to 72. Um, but when you're practicing, it's totally fine. Speaking of practicing, um, I'm going to play through this once at the slow tempo. You're welcome to grab your saxophone and come along, pause the video. But uh, here we go. Here's a whole run through. Ready, nice, and slow. Not bad at all. Um, then when you're ready to record though, um, it's going to ask that you bump it back to 72 and you are gonna to need to press that red button. So just for fun, let's go ahead and record it as if you were, uh, as if this is how you would submit it. So I press the red button, it's gonna have me do this um, stuff with my headphones, which you should be wearing headphones for this if you have some headphones with a wire. Two, ready, and go. <laughs> too fast for you, please practice it slowly first. Go down to 50, master the exercise at 50. Then once you're comfortable with 50, bump it up five clicks to 55. Master it at that tempo. 
60, 65, 70, and then finally 72. Um, that's the best way to practice. You don't ever, you always want to practice at a tempo that you can play it at rather than a tempo that's too fast. So good luck with this. Um, have fun and always email me with any questions and I look forward to seeing what you come up with.